Hello, Captains! This is The Doctor, and welcome to another Star Trek Online video. Today, I want to introduce to you a new character in my long lineup of characters in Star Trek Online. I have been playing with this new character for a little while now. I created this a few weeks ago when Star Trek Online had the uh, extra XP going. They had this XP weekend where you got double the XP and I utilized that in order to level up this character pretty fast. And the reason why I wanted to create this character was because I wanted another Romulan character. I also wanted a different career type because up to this point I have only had one Romulan character and that is my main character, Romulan character, named Rassilon, which you can see here. He is a science career. And I wanted another Romulan. I wanted an engineer and eventually a tactical. So what I have done is to roll a new Romulan. Uh, this time it's a female and as you can see I named her Buffy for the television show and she is an engineer this time and I have just recently got her to level 60 and the reason for this video is I just want to introduce this new character to you and show you what I'm working with in terms of building her up and uh, the kinds of ships I will be using on her because I will be I will be doing Romulan starship reviews with her uh, engineering cruiser type ships on her whereas I will stick to Romulan science vessel reviews with a Rassilon so let me log into her real quick here and um, basically I just want to give you an overview of where I'm at on this character uh, if you're wondering uh, I have not done a let's play series this time of this character uh, in fact I haven't even finished the storyline I am only up to vengeance on the Romulan storyline so I have done from the ashes allies in shadows wasteland and I'm starting the vengeance storyline so as you can see a ton of storyline still to do on this character however I'm already level 60 so that means I am end game on the character in terms of uh, total uh, total ranking I have all the things available to me at level 60 um, now because I haven't played all the missions yet uh, there is still a lot to do to build the character up in terms of gear and in terms of skill levels and uh, traits and uh, all kinds of other things so this is a very new character very very newish gear so don't judge me quite yet on the quality of the gear and the current build I have on her this will be an ongoing build that I'll be working on and I will be able to utilize this character to make starship reviews to do cruiser type starship reviews before we look at my space stuff, because as you can see, that's a very unique ship. We'll talk about that ship in a second. That's actually going to be my first Romulan cruiser ship review. But before we get to that, let me introduce you to all the ground stuff on this character. So as you can see, she is a female. And this time I went with a liberated Borg Romulan. So this is a liberated Borg Romulan. She does have the uh, Borg piece on here, the little eyepiece. And naturally she has the neural blast power because she is a liberated Borg. Uh, my Rassilon character is not a liberated Borg. He is just a normal Romulan. So this one's a little bit different, Liberated Borg. Now when I roll a tactical Romulan character, I will do a Reman, actually, because I have been wanting to also have a Reman character, and I figured a tactical character, career type, would be really good to do with a Reman. And in that way, 
the entire Romulan faction, I will have now then a Romulan, a liberated Borg Romulan, and then a Reman, and then all the career types covered. But I will do that tactical setup in the future. In fact, I may even, may even do a semi Let's Play series of the Reman under a tactical career on the Romulan faction. But for right now, um, I did not do a Let's Play series of this simply because this was very accelerated. Uh, using that double XP weekend, I was able to get to 60 like in no time flat. And as you saw, haven't even finished most of the storylines yet. So um, still a ton to do there. But it has been a lot of fun building this new liberated Borg Romulan been a lot of fun on, on the uh, engineering career. So this is what she looks like for now. This is just the standard um, Republic uniform that you get for the Romulan side. I haven't really messed a lot with costuming yet, um, but I will in the future. As far as um, her setup goes here, as you can see, it's very basic at the moment because I haven't yet had the resources or time to really fill in all the latest stuff. I am level 60, but you can see I'm still using like Mark 5 and 6 kit modules here, so I haven't, you know, upgraded a lot of stuff here yet. But of course, when I get better kit modules, I will get, you know, better quality kit modules in here. Probably start using a lot of universal kit modules. Uh, and uh, the kit frame, actually this kit frame is not bad here. I think this is almost as high as you can get. So yeah, the kit frame is not too bad. My body and shield armor is just the standard stuff right now. I do not have a, uh, a reputation gear set on this character yet. And I'm not really sure what reputation I'm gonna go with. I've been thinking about that. I could actually use some suggestions. Given the fact that this is a liberated Borg Romulan engineer, what kind of body and shield reputation set do you guys think I should use? I'm probably going to continue to use my Advanced Herald Anti-Proton Beam Projector as the primary weapon. So that's anti-proton damage. Um, I just need a good set, you know, reputation set. Right now, as far as reputation goes, I am working on Task Force Omega. That's the one I always start with on any new character. So I'm only tier one on Task Force Omega. And I'm also working on the new Romulus because I figure I'm probably going to use some stuff from that reputation on this character since it's a Romulan character. So right now, these are only tier one, and I'm gonna level those up, but what other reputation do you think I should go into on this character to set up the gear? That, I could really use some suggestions on that. Now, as for my bridge officers, um, I did pick up the Liberated Borg Riemann male. So this is one of my bridge officers. It's that unique Liberated Borg Riemann. I'm also using a uh, Romulan female but she's very rare. I'm also using an Android. This is a uh, one of my things I get on the Federation side. Uh, this is an Android female, and she's also very rare, so a very unique item. And then, of course, Toven Kev. You, you know, that's the character you first, like one of the first characters you meet on the Romulan faction. And so Toven Kev, he has a storyline with his sister, uh, in one of the storylines here, so I definitely wanted to keep him as a bridge officer. So right now, those are my bridge officers. I don't have any others on here. I really need to get some more and get that fleshed out, but right now I've got f the liberated Borg Riemann and the android female, and then of course Tovin Kev. So those are the unique bridge officers I have at the moment got some work to do on them as well. I have given all of them Herald Anti-Proton weapons. Some of them, this one's using Stun. This one is using Stun. This one is using Stun. And this one is Split Beam. <laughs> so he's the only one that has one that's a little different, but they are still the Herald Anti-Proton weapons. That you, I got these from the exchange, so that was quite good there and uh, helps my bridge officers do some damage on the ground.
but their shields and body armor is very weak at the moment. Again, you know, just can't worry about that until I get myself settled. Um, as far as skills go, uh, I'm very heavy on engineering skills because, again, this is an engineering build. So I've gone really heavy on the engineering stuff. I consider that I will most likely primarily be flying cruiser type ships on this character or big ships that have hangar bays. This will be the character that flies the big, hard to maneuver ships, the ones that can tank damage. That's what this character is going to be doing. So I've built that basically for that. I put, you know, a lot. I've got hull capacity, I got shield capacity. I've done EPS systems to the max, even uh, advanced impulse expertise. I've done the hull plating to the max. I did the defense subsystem tuning and offensive tuning to the max on here, and I maxed out the warp core potential. So a lot of engineering stuff, and then also I still want to do damage. So I've got energy weapon training and projectile weapon training maxed out, target expertise maxed out. Um, I accidentally put one in defensive maneuvering. I didn't mean to. I would take that off if I respec, which I probably will respec and go ahead and take that off. That was a mistake when I clicked that. I've got weapon amplification maxed out and weapon specialization maxed out. And I got hull penetration maxed out as well because I still want to do damage as a engineer. And I got long range targeting sensors maxed out so I can get the most damage at distance. So I basically am a tank that can do damage. I can also maneuver because I got the full impulse expertise. I can still maneuver and have all my power levels high as well while I'm doing all that. It's kind of how I'm building this character out. So you can see just not much in science. It's basically engineering and tactical for this, for this, for this uh, particular character. I have to finish going through the traits. I might redo these, but I got ground traits, of course, and space traits. Uh, I am going to go over these, probably take some off and redo these here. Uh, starship traits, uh, I actually got overwhelming force as a lockbox. Uh, yes, I had to open lockboxes because the ship that I am using is a low buy store ship. And I'm going to show it to you guys. It was 900 low buy, and it's so worth it. Uh, but opening the boxes, this is one of the traits I got. Beam overload creates charged particle burst. High yield torpedo creates photonic shockwave. It's the only one I have, so why not go ahead and add it? Um, I don't have space reputation unlocked yet or active reputation, but I do have all of the Omega Force ground reputation traits unlocked right now. Um, and as far as the reputation goes, again, I've only got Task Force Omega at Tier 1 and New Romulus at Tier 1, but I'm working through those to get the pieces. I'm going to get the universal... Uh, console here. I'm also going to get the kinetic cutting beam and then from the Romulus or the Romulan uh, stuff I'm probably going to grab the space set from this you know the Riemann or Romulan space set you know the deflector the um, impulse engine the shield and all that however I already have that set up on Rassilon my science character so this is another question to you guys you can help give me a suggestion what should I put on my ship in terms of reputation gear? Keep in mind, I will be using cruisers. I will be using heavy, big heavy ships, big slow turning heavy ships, and I will be doing plasma damage. So cruisers, heavy, slow turning, uh, plasma damage. What reputation space set should I be using on that ship? What do you guys recommend right now? on Rassilon, my science character, he has, excuse me, he has the full Riemann space set, the shield, the deflector, the impulse engine. He's got the full Riemann one maxed out. But what should I put on this character? Should I just put the same thing? Or should I use a different reputation set on this character? I would like something that could help me do plasma damage. And I think that's just gonna end up being the Riemann set again. But correct me if I'm wrong, let me know if there's another set that could actually be a little better on this character. I'm just not sure. But right now I'm going to those two. Just let me know if I should go into any other reputations on here that would benefit, you know, how I'm trying to develop this character. 
my stations are all screwed up at the moment because I've got to go through all the powers, so we're not going to pay attention to that right now. Um, the thing that I really had to do with this character because I wanted to get the uh, the ship in the low buy store is I had to open a lot of lock boxes. Now I don't normally open lock boxes, not into that. However, I wanted the ship I wanted, and therefore it was 900 low buy, and I just I had to do it. I had to open a ton of lock boxes in order to get this ship. And I will be doing a review on this ship I'm about to show you. It's nowhere near ready at the moment, but when it's ready, I will definitely be doing a review on it. Um, but from opening all those lock boxes, check out what I got here. This is like a ton of stuff here to work with uh, as in terms of lock box rewards. And check out what I got. I got a tier six ship prize pack. I don't know what ship to get from here, guys. This is another thing that I would like some suggestions on. What ship in here would you like to see reviewed? Which ship would you like me to get? We got the Benthan Assault, but I've already done that, I think. We got the Vodwar Manasa Assault Escort Tier 6. The Zindi Insectoid Olin Heavy Escort Tier 6. A Crinum Imperium Warship. I already did a review on that. The Herald Quas Flight Deck. I think I did a review on that. We got the Tarantula, uh, which I actually already have one of these ships, so I probably don't need to unpack this again. We got the Nikul Tadari Raider, the Cardassian Keldon, a Jim Hadar Dreadnought Carrier tier, tier, tier 6, Kelvin Timeline Talaru Intel Carrier Warbird, Ilachi Satet Escort Tier 6, Tal Shiar Adapted Destroyer, uh, Sphere, Build Sphere Builder, the noise dreadnought carrier those are the ships that i can unpack from this box i'm kind of leaning toward the alachi because i it's been a long time since i've done an alachi re ship review i did a, i did one when the tier 5 ship was released a long time ago but this is now a tier 6 ship they now have tier 6 versions of the alachi ships and i honestly really really like the alachi ships i like the crescent weapons it has um, this is an escort though, so I would need to put this on a, a character uh, that is a tactical officer, which I can do. And I'm really thinking about this one. That's kind of what I'm leaning toward. But you guys let me know if there's any ships on here that you would be interested in seeing me do. Um, some of them I might already have, so I don't have to unpack that. But ones I don't have, see I don't have the Vodwar Manasa. I don't have the Zindi Insectoid Olin. I don't have the Nikul Tadari Raider. I don't have the Keldon. I don't I'm I don't have the Jim Hadar Dreadnought Tier 6. I don't have the Talaru Intel Carrier Warbird. I don't have the Alachi Sateth. And I don't have the Sphere Builder Dreadnought Carrier. So those are the ones I don't have. So what do you guys think I should open? And whatever I open will be a ship I review for all of you. So please let me know. But I've also got some other cool things in here to open, unlock, and sell, and do whatever. Um, but one thing that has really helped me with these lock boxes is this weapon pack. You get to choose what type of weapons you want. And some of these are lockbox only weapons like Coalition Disruptors. L people love these Coalition Disruptors. They're very powerful weapons. And the only way you get them is the lockbox or for a lot of money on the exchange. But the one I'm going with on my build for this character is called Chrono Plasma Weapons. So I am building a plasma based weapon. So energy type is plasma based. But I'm using these new Chrono Plasma weapons. Now this is Nikul technology. So it says right here, Nikul technology, Chrono Plasma weapons behave almost identically to existing plasma weapons, except that the high temperature burning effect is caused by exciting local space time, inhibiting afflicted foes' abilities to interact with reality at full speed. Chrono Plasma technology can be found in both Starship and personal weaponry. So I've been opening this right here, and when you click on it, you get an option uh, to choose between a cannon or a beam or a ground weapon. But that's what I've been going with on my new build here are these Chrono Plasma. So I'm totally building out a Chrono, chrono Plasma setup. So let me go to the ship right now and I'll show you what I got. Here it is. This is the Tal Shiar Adapted Battlecruiser Tier 6. Low buy ship, 900 low buy. 
this is what I'm working with, folks. This is pretty awesome. And I cannot wait to do a review on this ship for you all. So this is just a preview of what is to come. It's going to take me a very long while to get all this set up. But as you can see, I've got four of the mastery unlocks done. I just have to work on the fifth one. And I got a ton of work to do on the weaponry and everything else on this thing. Now, luckily, this weekend is a double, uh, not double, yeah, double, double upgrade weekend. So that means we can upgrade gear a lot easier. So I may utilize this weekend to upgrade some of this gear to like Mark 14 and stuff. But as you can see, basic build on this is I'm going with this chronoplasma weaponry stuff. So chronoplasma dual beams, chrono, chronoplasma beam arrays, and in the back all chronoplasma beam array. Now these weapons here are lockbox drops. So you don't get to choose what modifiers obviously you get in a lockbox drop. So I'm going to have to go through and pick out, you know, which modifiers I really want to upgrade. Which, and like this one that has accuracy, for example, I, I would rather not have accuracy. I'd rather have, you know, something else. Um, this one has crit, decrit, chance, and damage. This one is crit, chance, and damage times two. So these are very mixed up. But I'm going to have to go through and like upgrade the ones that are more worth it to upgrade. And I will probably be opening more of these boxes to get more of these chronoplasma ones so I can get some better modifiers and then upgrade those. Uh, but that's basically what I'm going to be going with is this chronoplasma build on here. Now right now I'm only using the Aegis set setup. I've got the Aegis deflector, Aegis impulse, and Aegis shield. But I will again be using a reputation set up on here but as I asked previously I don't know what to put on here I'm thinking that probably it's going to end up being the Riemann set again but I'm not sure what's best so you guys give me some suggestions on what I should what reputation I should actually be using on this ship given the fact I'm using chronoplasma weapons now this ship also comes with a unique warp core this is called the Tal Shiar adapted Borg warp core plus 15 starship hull regeneration, plus 7.5 aux power, plus 5 maximum aux power. Um, add 7.5% of your aux power to your weapon power. 50% reduced cooldown on transwarp, uh, sector space increase, uh, and an auxiliary power buff. And it is part of the Tal Shiar Adapted Borg Technology Set, which I have two pieces. I've got this and the Indoctrination Nanite Dispersal System. With those two things combined, I get this regenerates 2.5% of your hull every 60 seconds and plus 10% to all shield healing. If you get all three pieces, it basically enhances your exotic damage. And to get all three pieces, you need the third piece, which is called the Shrapnel Torpedo Launcher. And I don't know where you get that from, but I will find out. Uh, the unique console that this ship comes with is called the Universal Enhanced Indoctrination Nanite Dispersal System. Now flat out, it gives you a plus 15% flight turn rate and plus 3 aux power setting. But this, this, de this device itself shoots a thing at enemies and it disables and force attacks allies. It disables and infects up to 5 targets in a 3 kilometer radius of your target for 5 seconds. It causes all infective targets to deal electrical damage to a nearby ally. Um, causes all infective targets to deal certain electrical damage to a nearby ally every half a second. Basically is what it does. So it does have a chaining effect um, and that's what it does. And that number 452 is I don't think correct. I have to beam up into space to see what the actual number is. Now, opening these lock boxes, I also got another cool little universal console that I have put on this ship. I think this might be Nikul technology also. Uh, this is the universal plasma wave. Now, what's really cool about this console is it has an inherent plus 20% plasma weapon damage on it already. So just by putting it on the ship in my science consoles automatically adds to my plasma weapon damage. So it's like having a fourth tactical console even though I only have three so, so I like that more more plasma damage the better um, it also ups your weapon power setting a bit 
and it has a charged plasma cone attack. After it charges, it deals a large amount of plasma damage to targets and a 45 degree cone. And it is that Nukul power. You'll see like sometimes that red beam up shoot out from Nukul ships. This is that power. I can now do what the Nukul do using that cone uh, plasma damage attack. So uh, all plasma damage, it all goes in coincides with the chrono plasma weaponry it all works out really well just a very cohesive kind of build on this ship and of course i got plasma energy weapon damage on my tac consoles and uh, i have the uh, xenotech power flow for power transfer rate and hole penetration i also added an rcs with hole capacity and a neutronium with resistance and, and more power transfer rate and i'm going to put the universal borg console here now some of this stuff can change around, but for right now this is what I got. It's not, it's not the bestest build in the world right this second. It's actually a little weak, even though my stats are very good. For some reason I end up dying very fast. I'm not sure why. Even though my hull strength is like over 100,000, I still end up dying quite easily. Uh, not sure why, but I've got a lot to work on on this character, but this is just a preview basically to show you what I got working in the wings and what I'm going to be working with so that I can do some Romulan cruiser reviews. And I will also be doing Romulan science ship reviews with Rassilon as well. I haven't done any of those yet, but I'm starting to work more on the Romulan stuff so I can bring you some of those starship reviews on this side as well. Now, let me just show you real quick in the low buy store where this ship is located, right here under ships and crew. This is the one that I got, the Tal Shiar Adapted Battle Cruiser Tier 6 for 900 low buy. And here's all the stuff on it. It is uh, Tier 6. Um, it's got a hull strength of 42,000 at level 40, 48,3 at level 50, and 56,000 at level 60, a shield modifier of 1.3. It has four four weapons, four aft, one lieutenant tactical slash intel seating, one lieutenant commander engineering, one lieutenant commander science slash command, one ensign universal, one commander universal. I love that commander universal because I can put, if I want this to be a really engineering oriented ship, I can put a commander engineering bridge officer in there. Or if I want to have a lot of tactical powers, I could put a commander tactical seating in there. So I love having this be a universal slot. I can make this ship do anything I want with that. I could make a, I can have char a character on each career bridge officer maxed out with powers that I can switch out based on what I need to. I love that option there. So this is a very versatile ship extremely versatile it has three tactical four engineering and four science this ship is a little science heavy and in fact the f mastery the starship trait on this is geared toward exotic damage which is sciencey stuff so this ship actually would re work really good on a science character too um, base turn rate seven degrees per second plus 10 to shield power and to aux power so you can kind of see how it leans a little bit toward the sciency end of things with this ship. It has the enhanced indoctrination nanite dispersal system. It's got sensor analysis. Now you only really see sensor analysis on science ships. So again, that lends to this thing leaning more toward science than tactical for sure. It can be an engineering slash sciency ship. It's got a cloaking device. It can load cannons. Um, and it's got the mastery package and then it's got cruiser commander rays so even though some of the stuff does lean towards science it still has all the cruiser commander rays that you would find on a cruiser it's got strategic maneuvering shield frequency modulation and weapon system efficiency so it's a hybrid engineering science ship which i find to be very exciting and i have put it on my engineering career character because that's how i that's where i felt it fits best but it could also work very well on a science character. It's a very good combination or hybrid of an engineering and science ship. Really, really, really cool idea. Let's take a look at it in space because I know that's what you all want to see. You really want to see what this thing looks like and how it behaves and performs in combat and everywhere. So let's just take a look at it here in space because it is a really awesome looking ship. 
Huge. Huge ship. Very large ship. But look at that sucker. I mean, that is beautiful, folks. That is a starship. That is a Borg ship. Now, if you're not familiar with the history of this ship, it is kind of based on a Dideridex. So think of a Romulan Dideridex with Borg enhanced technology mutating the ship. That's kind of what it is. It's almost like it's almost like um, uh, the guy, the dude, the guy. I forget his name. Is it? Sh it's not Shinzon, is it? Or is it? No. Is that the other guy? No. It's N Nero. Neo. Nero. Whatever. Yeah. Nero. It's kind of almost like where the Borg assimilation stuff mutated his mining ship. It's kind of done the same thing here on the on a Dideridex. It's taken a an advanced Dideridex tier six ship and turned it into a Borg hybrid. So that's why it has the long pointy claws in the front of it, uh, almost like a big uh, a big crab, I guess, or or something with claws for sure. Um, this is really cool looking though. The detail on this ship is just phenomenal. I can't get over looking at it. It is an extremely detailed ship. It's got the core here in the middle like that. I mean, just look at that. I mean, it is really, really, really cool design. Now, as I mentioned, I've got a long way to go on fixing everything, but let's just look at my current stats. Again, I don't have the fifth mastery unlocked yet. I'm sitting at around 260% power transfer rate, and my hull strength is 103,000. So I am over 100,000 hull, yet I seem to be dying easily in the ship still, so I'm not sure what's going on. Hull repair rate is 71.5. My shield strength is almost 20,000, so it's pretty good. My resists are a little above 40%. My crit severity is currently 72.3% and crit chance is almost 10%. So I'd like to get those higher, crit chance and crit severity. Uh, again, it's gonna, what's going to help is when I get the modifiers all figured out on these weapons. And then, of course, I upgrade my weapons. That'll be better as well. Now, with my current buffs that I have on here, um, I'm getting a 17 degree per second turn rate which, as you can see here, is actually very maneuverable on this ship. So even though it naturally, inherently has a very slow turn rate, you put an RCS accelerator on here and a high engine speed, over 50, I got 51 engine speed right here, is really not terrible turn rate. Considering I'm using all beams, it works out real well. I can use fire at will, I can use beam overload, you know, I can use beam weapons on here and the maneuverability is decent with all that on here. Um, it is huge though, so you have to get used to that. For example, you'll be zoomed out a lot. Like here, this is maximum zoom out. I cannot scroll any more out. I cannot zoom any more out. I'm zoomed all the way out right now. Here's, here's zoomed all the way in. This is zoomed all the way in. And this is zoomed all the way out right there. So you'll most likely be playing all the way zoomed out. Which means other people's ships are going to look a little smaller to you. But that's just because your ship is so big. I mean, look at this. It dwarfs. Look how, look how it dwarfs a ship like that. I mean, amazing. It's a big ship. So get used to, to that. But it, it can turn well. If you don't buff the turn rate, though, it can turn slowly. And that might that might hurt. I like my ships to be agile and fast moving and turn well and I made this one do that so I'm happy with that. Uh, it's not as bad as I thought it would be which is good. Um, now as far as the powers go I can't show you here at Earth Space Dock but here is the indoctrination nanites. Um, there is the damage it's 480.2 so it says causes all infected targets deal 480.2 electrical damage to a nearby ally, uh, ally so it's not a huge amount of electrical damage but it's something um, and it disables them too it disables the target so keep that in mind so it does do a thing um, I haven't used it a whole lot yet, but I will be practicing with it, playing around with it, and seeing uh, how it works well. I haven't seen the chain effect yet on it, so I'm interested in that. Now, the little console I got here, this one, again, the plasma wave, here's it right here. Here's a button for it. 
and it deals 32,139 plasma damage to the target right now. And that's with all my plasma. So anything that buffs plasma damage that you put on the ship is going to also buff the plasma damage of this. Again, it's a Nakul technology, and I kind of like this hybrid of Tal Shiar, Borg, Nakul. It's a hybrid of Tal Shiar, Borg, and Nakul. So you've got the Tal Shiar, you know, kind of the Deridex kind of ship. Then you've got the Borg mutation of it and the enhanced features of the Borg. And then on top of that, you've got the time traveling Nakul abilities, like their chronoplasma plasma arrays and this plasma, this plasma cone damage thing. So it's like a hybrid of Tal Shiar, Borg, and Nakul. And I really like that. It really has, fits together well on this ship so far. But I got a long ways to go. Now, since this is just a preview, um, what I will do is let's go do a quick patrol. And I can show you the indoctrination nanites. I can fire them off and show you what that looks like. And then I can show you what the plasma wave cone looks like. And those are the two unique abilities. Everything else is just going to be based on whatever bridge officer powers you choose to use. Which at the moment, I haven't even gone through my powers. I just threw these on. But I have to figure out all my powers. I'm not even using this one right now. So there's a lot of powers that I can figure out. And I'm using the universal commander slot for engineering right now. But you, again, you, again, you could put a tactical in here and have like a commander tactical power on this ship or a commander science power. You, I mean, it's amazing the flexibility of this ship. I love that. Look at that thing. We're right up inside it. So let's go to a patrol real quick. And I'll just show off those two abilities so that you can see how they operate. How about that? Just to give you a little preview of what's to come. Now, since this character is brand new and, uh, you know, not really geared properly, I haven't even finished all the missions and everything, it's going to take me a while to get to that point where I can do the review on this ship. But once I get to that point, it's going to be pretty awesome. So just be patient with me as I get there. And this will be really cool. I'll be able to do all kinds of um, Romulan cruiser ships, big ships, carrier ships, carriers with pets, all that kind of stuff on here. With this new character, it's going to be—it's been a lot of fun. I've, I've enjoyed leveling this character up. I've enjoyed working with a new Romulan character, uh, liberate, liberated Borg Romulan. The Romulan faction is very fun to play. Even if some don't consider it a full faction, and I don't, I still think it's fun. The storyline in it is fun. And by the way, I did side, as you can see, with the Federation on this character. So, Rassilon, my science character, Romulan, is also aligned with the Federation. And this character, Buffy, engineering, is also aligned with the Federation. Now, my next character I do which will be a Reman tactical officer, I may align him with the KDF, just so I have one Romulan who's aligned with the other side. So I'll probably end up doing that. Okay, so just just we're just showing off the abilities here. I'm not really going to fight all the enemies. I just want to show you what these features do. So I'm going to red matter up my ox power and stuff. Further ox power. And here goes the indoctrination nanites. That's what it does. It's a little ball. It hits the ship. And that's it. It's supposed to disable them and then do electrical damage if people are nearby. Though I don't see it really doing electrical damage to the other enemy. They're, I guess they're too far away. But that's all it is, so it doesn't really do a whole lot on its own. Unfortunately. But, here is the cone. Watch this. This is the Nakul power. 
that was pretty awesome. So you can see there that the Nikul power, that that uh, that cone plasma damage, is actually a lot cooler, I think, than the indoctrination nanites. Um, it actually does a lot more damage, and if I had a lot of enemies, like right now I have a lot of enemies here, if I were to fire it off there, it would do damage to all of them, not just one. So I kind of like the uh, I kind of like this one a lot. It's got a two-minute cooldown. That's the only downside. It's got a pretty long cooldown, but it seems to do more than the indoctrination nanites do. All this does is disable and then a low electrical damage, but I didn't see it doing that electrical damage because the other ship is too far away. The ships literally have to be really close to each other for that damage to chain. So that's kind of a downside and drawback to the nanites here, is the ships have to be really close to each other for it to work well. If they're not really close, it really doesn't help you a whole lot. Let's fire it off again since these ships are kind of close. Maybe it will. So let's fire it off. We'll fire it off on um, this escort here. Ship is under okay, now you can see the electrical damage is doing. See the green stuff going back and forth there? So that's cool, but now it's over and it didn't kill them. It didn't even kill the frigates. So it's not very powerful. Not that powerful at all. Warning. Ship is under attack. But we can use the cone thing. And this one is powerful. I like that one. And then here's what the chronoplasma weapons look like. Target shield has failed. Left shield failing. So there is a little preview on the combat. You guys can see how it works in combat. It's a big ship and you got to kind of maneuver it like that. But beams are definitely going to be the best thing for this ship. Even though it can support cannons, you would not be in the right mind if you chose cannons. This thing is definitely built for beams. So yeah, as you can see, I got a ton of work to do on this ship and this character and this build, but it's going to be pretty awesome once I get it all done. And uh, this will be my first cruiser type of Romulan ship review. And I was very excited to get this ship. I was looking forward to it once I heard about it. And then once I saw it in the low buy store, I knew I had to have this ship so I could take a look at it. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, I'll also just give you a little quick preview on my other character, Rassilon, who is my main Romulan character. Now on him, I have spent a lot more time because I... 
I did a playthrough on him a long time ago. Uh, this was the uh, original Romulan playthrough I did, the very first one and only one I've ever done. Um, so if you want to watch that, you can check in the upper right corner and watch that. Um, but on this character, he is my science character. And I've, since I've had a lot more time to work on him, everything's kind of maxed out right now. But I am flying the Fleet Hanam Guardian Warbird, upgraded to Tier 5 U. And the reason why is because before th before now, they, they have recently released some really cool science ships. But before that, there was not a really good science ship for the Romulan faction. Pretty much the Hanam was the best you could get as far as a science ship go. And I decided to go ahead and get the fleet version so that I could have the, the better one, the best one. And then I upgraded it to tier 5U because it's upgradable as well. It's not upgradable to tier 6 of course, just tier 5U. It originally is a tier 5 ship. <clears throat> Excuse me, but this is what I have been flying on this character for a very long time and I've maxed out everything to epic. So I will be doing science ship reviews on this character and this will be the first science ship that I do a review on. Uh, first Romulan science ship and that's the Fleet Hanam. So that gives you guys an idea of ship reviews I will be doing on the Romulan faction to come. I will be doing science ship reviews and then engineering slash cruiser slash carrier reviews. I will be able to do that. Now in the future once I roll a tactical character, again a Reman, and make him a tactical, then I can do a Warbird, not Warbird, Escorty type, whatever the Romulans call their Escort type ships. Maybe they call them Warbirds, whatever. I'll be doing those smaller, more maneuverable ships on the tactical side once I roll that character, and all my ships will go on that character for the Romulan side. And I do plan to do that in the future. I probably will not record the entire run through of that of that uh, series because there's no reason to repost all of the missions because there's a lot of missions and to, there would be well over a hundred videos just on that but instead what I will do is every time I rank up to a new rank like level 10 and then 20 and then 30 40 50 and 60 once I get to those milestones of the character where you upgrade to a new ship I will probably make a video about it and show you my progress. Like here I am on the character, here's the missions I played, here's the ship that I'm choosing for whatever level I am. And I will probably align that character with the KDF side as well. <clears throat> but that's what I plan to be doing on the Romulan faction coming up and ship reviews. And also Federation ship reviews to, get, to come as well. So basically this video was just to serve a little purpose to, to show you a new character that I have uh, developed in the game that I did not record as a series but I did anyway just for fun on my own and have really enjoyed uh, uh, rolling this liberated Borg Romulan. It's been a lot of fun and it was um, I learned some new things doing the Romulan faction again for the second time. Uh, I learned a lot more this time than I did the last time and uh, it was pretty fun and we got to where we got and now we move on and do the next mission. But uh, yeah, tell me what you think of those suggestions. I need suggestions on the ground reputation set I need to be using and then the space reputation set I should be using as well. Considering that I'm using chronoplasma weapons in space, but on ground I'm using the Herald anti-proton weapon. Uh, so there you go everybody, that's what I've got. This was the introduction of my new character, Buffy in Star Trek Online. And I think it's going to be a pretty, a pretty cool uh, run for this character, and I can't wait to show her, show you all those starship reviews. It's going to be a lot of fun. We got a lot of work ahead of us to, to show you. I've got Federation ships to catch up on, and now I'm getting into these Romulan ships and having a lot of fun with it. So, uh, a lot of stuff to look forward to. If you uh, want to subscribe, of course, to the right. Uh, you can, and you'll get. You can uh, check the notification box, the little bell icon. Make sure you check that, and you'll get notifications of new videos. But uh, that's what I plan to be doing here in the next uh, couple of weeks, two or three weeks. It's like really going heavy on ship reviews and getting caught up for you guys. 
So I'm looking forward to that. I'll probably have a new compressed ship review format so that the videos aren't so long, yet they will get to the important stuff. So that's what I got for now, everybody. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Stay tuned for the next one.